try to do a different type of video today, something I've never done at all on this channel. And it is because I have recently become super obsessed with a book Utopia. And her name is Sasha Alsberg, I think her last name is. Correct me if I'm wrong. And what she does is she talks about books that she loves to read. And I don't know why, but it's just recently like inspired me to make a book related video on my own. So without further ado, welcome to my tiny little bookshelf. <laughs> this isn't to say that I don't want to buy a lot more books because trust me, I do. My TBR list is so long. I especially want to read the Outlander series, but I am forcing myself to hold off on buying all of those books as much as I want to. <laughs> and I want to finish the books that I already own. Anyway, so let's get started. So my bottom bookshelf right here, there isn't really too much of a rhyme or reason to how I have organized these books. Most of them are books that I had to purchase for reading throughout high school. So the first book down here is Living in America, The Soul Saga of James Brown by Cynthia Rose. And I think this was for a middle school assignment, or maybe it was even elementary school, I don't even know, it was so long ago. Um, and I had to do a biography of a famous person. I can't say if I liked it or not because I honestly didn't really read it and I haven't read it since. So maybe one day, most likely not. It's probably just gonna chill on my bookshelf for the rest of eternity. <laughs> the second book is The Cat Who Came In From The Cold by Jeffrey, oh, I'm gonna butcher this name so badly. Jeffrey Museyev Mason, oh God. Oh, I'm so bad at names, guys. I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. Um, I believe this was also for a school book report or something like that. I don't even actually really remember what it's about. It's about cats, and I like cats a lot, so I probably enjoyed this book when I read it, but honestly, I have no idea. The next book is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, and I'm pretty sure almost everyone had to read this book throughout middle school, I think it is. I remember really liking this book when I had to read it in class, and the movie adaptation was also really good. The next book is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I don't remember when I had to read this book, but I remember actually really liking it. It's pretty much a bunch of animals are anthrop... Oh, what's that word? Anthropomorphized? I don't know if I said that right. All these animals in the forest that take up like human form, like they walk on two legs and they function in society as humans. Moving on, one of my favorite books as a child is The Giver by is it Lois Lowry or Lewis? No, Lois Lowry. I remember. It's a woman. Honestly, I actually reread this book maybe last year, I believe, like the summer before I left for college because I just liked it so much and I knew that there was like a movie coming out last year so I wanted to refresh my memory before I watched the movie. It kind of has a sort of 1984 Brave New World feel, but it's centered around children, so it's way more relatable. I kind of like these stories that are like, at first glance, it's a utopian society, everything's perfect, but when you really look into it, it's more dystopian and really messed up. If you guys haven't read The Giver, I don't know where you've been for like the past 20 years, but you really need to read this book. The next book in my library is The Iliad of Homer. Honestly, haven't read this book, probably should. I think my uncle might have given me this book a long time ago and I just like stuffed it in the bookshelf and kind of forgot about it and moved on to other books. Maybe one day, I'm probably gonna say this for a lot of books on this shelf, I'm just saying. <laughs> Next book is, ooh, has a really pretty cover. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is The Age of Fable, The, the Age of Fable by Bullfinch. Haven't read this either. When I was younger, I was super into like Greek mythology and all that stuff, so my uncle was so nice and kind to gift me with a few Greek mythology books, including this one, but to be honest, haven't read it. Oops. And once again, this is another Greek mythology book that my uncle gifted me. It is Myths and Legends of Greece and Rome by Barons, a handbook of mythology. And I actually read like, I don't know, when I got this years ago, I read like the first few pages. I've dwelled on this for far too long. Uh, maybe one day I'll read this book as well. So now we get to the books that I had to read for my classes in high school. I talk with my hands a lot. Ooh, I'm Italian, sorry. Actually, no, not sorry. So these three books are all John Steinbeck books. The Winter of Our Discontent, Sweet Thursday, and East of Eden. From what I remember, I loved reading all three of these books, especially The Winter of Our Discontent and East of Eden. 
John Steinbeck books are classic, obviously. Fun fact, John Steinbeck and I went to the same high school. Get back in there. That's what she said. Next book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Classic book. I had to read this for a summer assignment before I started my sophomore year of high school. I remember I waited the week before the first day of school to start reading this book. And this is kind of a big book. Let's we'll see, it has like close to 500 pages and the print is really tiny. So I don't know how I actually finished it, but powered through and I actually liked it, even though it was kind of tough to understand some parts because this book was written in the 1800s, so language was obviously different back then. Don't know why I had a little bit of a British accent there. Oops. <laughs> and the next book is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Most people had to read this book in high school. I remember I read it my freshman year of high school. Yes, my freshman year. And I liked it. Yep, not much else to say about that. Moving on. Next book is Anne Frank, Diary of Anne Frank, or sorry, Diary of a Young Girl. And obviously this is written by Anne Frank. Actually, I think this was middle school that I read this. Next book is 1984 by George Orwell. And I read this book a few times, actually. I read it for my world history class for my sophomore year of high school. I also read it my senior year of high school for my AP literature class. And both times I liked the book. Another utopian slash actually dystopian type novel. Next book is The Chosen by Chaim Poto. Oh god, I probably butchered that so badly, I apologize. I read this my senior year of high school, I believe. From what I remember, I liked this book. Pretty much most of the books that I read for my AP language and my AP literature classes, I really loved. Okay, this is taking way too long, so I'm just kind of going to speed through the rest of the books that I read for high school. There is Ship Fever by Andrea Barrett, and I remember this is just like a bunch of different stories, and I didn't have to read all the stories in here, I just had to choose one or two, I think. There is Under the Feet of Jesus by Helena Maria Viramontes. Oh no! Crap. <laughs> Fail. There is Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. Good play, I really enjoyed this play. Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. Read this in my sophomore year. Huge book. I think a lot of it kind of went over my head when I read it that first time, so. But I remember I actually did enjoy it. Next I have another book by Jeffrey Mosef Mason called The Nine Emotional Lives of Cats. Oh my god, this makes me sound like such a crazy cat lady. But this was also probably like a school book report type deal. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. Another book that I had to read for, I believe that was my sophomore year of high school. Um, next is The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith, sophomore year of high school. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, classic book, read that my senior year. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I think I read this, yeah, I read this my junior year of high school. Really dark and it's actually true, true story, so that makes it even creepier. Okay, we're actually kind of getting to more exciting books, yay. Next we have Girl Online by a YouTuber named Zoella, or Zoe Sugg, that's her actual real name. If you guys haven't heard of Zoella, I don't know where you've been, or you just maybe don't watch beauty guru type videos, but I actually haven't read this book yet. Oops. Plan to this summer. We will see. Next, oh boy. <laughs> Next we have Miley Cyrus, Miles To Go, her autobiography that she wrote when she was like 16, and back in the day I was super obsessed with Miley Cyrus. Ask anyone, they will tell you how obsessed with Miley I was. Hannah Montana was my childhood, just saying. Next we have my favorite musician of all time, Ed Sheeran, his book A Visual Journey. And as you can see, I am currently going through it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like different stories of him growing up and getting into the business. And then there's pictures and drawings of a, from a friend of Ed. And yeah, it's really cool so far, really dig it. Next we have a cinematography book. Um, it is by Blaine Brown, The Theory and Practice, Image Making for Cinematographers and Directors. My uncle got me this book as well. Maybe one day I'll reference or refer to this book. 
but as of right now, haven't. Next, we have Kathir Boy, I believe it is. The true story of a black youth's coming of age in apartheid South Africa. It's an autobiography by Mark Mathabane, and it is actually, not brag, um, personally signed by the author. It's not gonna focus, but there it is. Woo! Haven't read it though. <laughs> Oops. I think you're catching on to the pattern here. And last book on here is a Spanish dictionary. Um, I don't think we need to dwell on that. Okay, so bookshelf two, we get to a bunch of series type books. Actually, I think all of these books are sort of pretty much series related. Ugh. Okay, so this is kind of awkward, like really awkward. Um, the first series is the Inheritance series. Aragon, Eldest, Brisinger, and Inheritance and it is by Christopher Paolini. When I was younger, I really liked the Aragon movie, even though now that I look back on it, it is a really bad adaptation of a book. But I have read the first, second, and part of the third book. Honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna ever go back to them. Maybe one day, but as of now, I have other series that I want to read. I remember when I was reading these, I really did enjoy them, even though the third one was kind of slow, and that's probably the reason that I haven't finished it yet. The next book is Mortal Instruments, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. And this is the most recent book that I actually have finished. I finished it maybe like a month ago, I think? Maybe, no, a little bit less than a month ago. And I really enjoyed this book, so I am excited to buy the other books in the series and read those as well. I'm also interested to see how well the TV show adaptation will be. And I believe that comes out next year, yes. Oh man, am I going to hold all these books up at the same time? Let's do it. Okay, so I can't put these the other way or else they're all going to fall. But these are all of the... Oops, that fell. These are all of the House of Night books. Yeah, I literally have all of the books. There's Marked, Betrayed, Chosen, Untamed, Hunted, Tempted, Burned, Awakened, Destined, Hidden, Revealed, and... Redeemed. Uh, the, only the book cover for Redeemed is here right now because I am currently reading the last book in the series. Honestly, a lot of people give this series flack because it is really cheesy, I will admit, but this is like the first series that I became super attached to, so I don't know, I just felt I had to finish it, and I will. Haven't read any of the novellas though, but I don't know if I will. Oh, by the way, these are written by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. That is a mother-daughter writing duo, so that's pretty cool. Next two books on this bookshelf are The Murder of Bindi McKenzie and The Year of Secret Assignments by the author Jacqueline Moriarty. This author, I believe is Australian. I don't know how popular these books are in America, but I just remember years ago I was in a Barnes and Noble, randomly picked up The Murder of Bindi, McKen Bindi McKenzie off the bookshelf and bought it because it sounded interesting, honestly, and I actually did really like it. I've used this book for a book report, I believe, and The Year of Secret Assignments. This one I purchased specifically for a book report. And they are related. They aren't like in the same series, but they're set in the same world. A lot of the same characters overlap. Really like these books. If you haven't read them yet, you really should. <laughs> oh God, so these books, I don't know how many of you read these books a long time ago when they came out. They are the TTYL series, I guess you could call them. There's TTYL, TTFN, and Later Gator. And they are all written by Lauren Miracle. I believe the first book came out in like 2004. I read these books when I was way younger than I probably should have been when I read these because they are kind of scandalous. A little bit. They're not like Fifty Shades of Grey status or anything like that. But yeah, they're all written in like IM format, instant messaging. In instant messaging. So. That's kind of interesting. Don't really remember what these are about at all, but it was just like a bunch of like, I guess like high school girls going through the ups and downs of high school relationships, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Next series is the Hoot series by Carl Hyacin, 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 probably one of those, I hope. Um, and I have read Hoot. I remember when the movie came out a long time ago with I believe Logan Lerman was in it and Cody Lindley. I was so in love with like both of them <laughs> when I was younger. But anyways, that probably inspired me to read these books. Um, so I read The Hoot, I liked it. And I believe I tried to start Flush, 
but I couldn't get into it because it wasn't like the same characters, I think, if I remember correctly, and then I never got to scat. I bought these books when I was like in elementary school. Every single year we would have like a day dedicated to like reading and buying books. So I bought these books and I don't think I'm going to read them again honestly because they are way too young for me, I'd say. <laughs> okay, probably going to do this. So the next books are the Twilight series. Not even gonna be ashamed, I really liked these books when I read them in middle school. I remember one of my friends read like the first book, it was kind of like a domino effect, all the rest of us started reading them, so I probably just like, I don't know if that's a term, just like binge read these books. Yeah, I really liked them, also liked the movie series, I will admit it, I was a tryhard. Really tempted to actually read these books again. We finished the second shelf, we finished the second shelf, Progress. Okay, and we finally have made it to the top shelf in my bookshelf. The first four, oh, if I can get these out, the first four books in this bookshelf are all by the author John Green. And I'm sure you guys have heard of John Green. Like, I don't know where you've been in the past like few years if you haven't heard of him. He's everywhere. I have The Fault in Our Stars, which I have read. Loved this book. I've read this book like maybe like three times, I'd say. Maybe two or three times. Love the movie. Can't say enough about this book. If you haven't read it, read it. The next one is Paper Towns. Read this book as well. Liked it, but not as much as The Fault in Our Stars. Next is Looking for Alaska. This was the most recent John Green book that I have read, and I was, I don't know, I thought it was okay, but it did not captivate me nearly as much as Paper Towns or Fault in Our Stars, but it was all right. And then the last book is, God, this is so awkward, I'm holding all these books at once. The next book is An Abundance of Catherines, and I actually haven't read this book yet, so gotta get on that, Michaela. So the next series is, whoa, new. Next series is the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. And I have read all four of these books. The last book, it came out after, obviously after these three books, and it's a collection of stories told from four's perspective. Really liked this as well. I'll be honest with which ones I liked the most. I sped through the first book in I think like two days. I was so obsessed with the first book. Second book was all right, sped through that one pretty quickly too, but the third book, Allegiant, oh my God, I took like a year and a half, exaggerating, but I took a really long time to read Allegiant because I don't know what it is, but usually the third books or the final books in the series, I just have a tough time getting through. Overall though, I really liked this series. The movie adaptations though, I was, I really liked Divergent, but I was not impressed with Insurgent at all. I think they changed a little too much, but that's just one girl's opinion. Moving on, we have The Hunger Games. I don't know why I say that, but The Hunger Games, I love this series, as does like most every other teenage girl these days. I think I read all three of these books probably like right after the first movie came out and I just became hooked. But like I said with the Divergent series, the third book in the series, I had a tough time getting through. I don't know if it's because I dreaded saying goodbye to the characters, but it just didn't captivate me as much as the second the first and second books did. By the way, I didn't say that obviously these books are by Suzanne Collins. I don't know why you guys wouldn't know that, but just in case. These are my Harry Potter books by JK Rowling, obviously. I'll be honest, I've only read the first and second books in the series. I know, I'm a horrible person. I don't know where I've been, but for some reason this series has like escaped me all these years and I haven't sat down and read them. But I will, definitely. Like, this summer, I want to finish this series. I'm just way late on it, but this needs to get done. Like, for real. Almost there, guys. The next books are The Hobbit and The Three Lord of the Rings books by J.R.R. Tolkien. Again, I'll be honest, I haven't read these books. I started reading The Hobbit, but to me it was really slow. I don't know, I tr I've tried to start reading it multiple times. I loved all six Six? Yeah, six of the movies. I really need to respect the books and the series and read the books. Next, this is the final series that I own, and it is all of the, I don't know what you actually call this series, but it's like the Narnia series, I guess. It has like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian. Again, I bought these when I was like in elementary school and there was like some sort of like reading type fair at my school 
and I purchased all of them at once. I have gotten through, it's been so long. Oh, by the way, these are written by C.S. Lewis. Oh, The Chronicles of Narnia. There we go. God, why could I not even think of that? Wow, I'm an idiot. I think I have gotten through the first and the second books, but I know I have gotten through the first book, The Magician's Nephew. Yeah, I really am far behind on this series as well. And I liked the movies, even though I don't know why they like skipped a bunch of the books for the movie adaptations. So the last two books on my bookshelf, <laughs> why did I say that so weird? On my bookshelf. The last two books on my bookshelf are two Nicholas Sparks books. There is Dear John and The Last Song. Read both of these years ago, like right before both of the movie adaptations were about to come out. And I loved both of these books, especially The Last Song. Um, I think I read this two times, I'm pretty sure. Dear John made me cry. Last Song did not. Last Song movie made me cry. Dear John movie did not. Or did I have that opposite? I don't even remember. Um, all I know is I, <laughs> I liked both of these books. These are the only two Nicholas Sparks books I have read. And I probably should read more because I really like his writing. And I don't know how he is so romantic, but he is. <laughs> oh my god, we made it, guys! We made it through, if I can put these books back successfully. Ugh. We made it through my entire entire little bookshelf. I'm glad we accomplished that. I hope you guys, maybe you learned a little bit more about me through my choice of books, the ones that I like. If you guys want me to go more in depth with any of these books, I might. You could suggest that in the comments. Um, I'm not really good at reviewing books, I'd say. I don't know. English was never my strong suit. I enjoy reading books, but then when I have to actually talk about them and analyze them and the characters, the plot, blah, blah, blah. That's <laughs> where things kind of go murky for me because I kind of have a bad memory. Anyways, I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video. This is definitely way different than anything that I've ever done before. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit, so I should probably get on that and stop talking. But if you guys want me to do more book related videos, then just comment down below and I will do so. So I'm going to get editing, so I will shut up now. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.